So going to the first question, um, this one, okay. So Terra is uh, 10 raised to power 12 and minus 12 is equal and that's small a. All right. SI base unit. So base units are ampere and meters. These are not base units. Then it says uh, this is the equation. We have some percentage uncertainties. Uh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Calculate the percentage uncertainty in row. Okay. So whenever this comes, so first of all, I would like to make row the subject. So if I do that, it will be v times pi d square over 4 l i would be equal to rho. So when once you make the subject, then you write the equation. The equation is going to be, see, uh, the uncertainty in rho over rho equals to change in v over v. So I'm going to just leave some spaces and write all the variables, so d upon d plus L upon L plus I upon I. I would not include the constants. So constants are right now pi and four. And then I would check their powers. So uh, as you can see, D has two, so I'm gonna multiply two right here. So nobody else has any powers. Now, to find it in percentage, uh, if I could have all of these in percentage, right? Just like this and like this and like this so that would make sense right so right now we have a change in v the percentage of v is 3.5 so i'm going to add this plus two times d is three percent and the percentage uncertainty of l is 2.5 and i is just two so this should uh, three, six, six, and eight, eight, and eight, eight, and six, 14. So it is going to be 14%. I'm going to write it right here. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Then says the absolute uncertainty. So we have the value here and uh, change in P over P, a row. Percentage was 14%. So the fraction would be 0 0.14. And to find this, we would multiply rho, which is 4.1 times 10 raised to minus seven. So once you do that, remember to write it in uh, one SF. So second piece. Zero point one four times four point one times ten raised to power five seven. So that would be five point seven times ten raised to eight. So I'm gonna write it as six into ten raised to the power minus eight ohmmeters. So make sure, always remember, absolute uncertainty is always written in one significant figure. So do remember that. Then uh, I don't think there is anything else. If you have questions, please do let me know. Okay. So speaking of this then, going forward, So this is not in our course. Uh, electric field is gone, so we're going to skip this question. When you go through, so what is power? So power uh, would be work done 
per unit time. So that should be power. And uh, then here, it says a car moves at constant velocity and distance of 25 from A to B. So uh, A resistance is friction provide a total resistive force of 440 that opposes the motion. For the movement of car A, calculate the change in kinetic. If the velocity stays constant, then kinetic energy is not going to change. So it means it has to be zero. Because, I'm just writing for you people, because velocity remains constant. That's fine. Now, calculate the work done against resistive forces. So we have the distance it moves. We have the force that, you know, goes. So work done equals to force times displacement. 440 times 25. That is uh, 1.1 1 .1 times 10 raised to power 3. No, 4, 10, 4. Okay, 4, 2. Now, then we move to the next question. It says the movement of the car in uh, B from A to B because the gravitational potential energy increases to this. So we have that. Increase the vertical height. So we know that gravitational potential energy is given by mgh. I think the mass was somewhere given. Uh, okay, it's here, 1700. So I'm gonna write 1700 times 9.81 times the height, and it should be 4.8 times 10 raised to power. So, this would basically mean divided by 1700 divided by 9.81. Okay. So this is about 2.88. So I'm going to write it here 2.88 meters. And then it says angle theta. Now, what do you do? So you know that the slope looks like this. We already know that this is 25 meters and there is a theta here and this is 2.88. So we can use sine then because sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 2.88, hypotenuse is 25. So we got to take sign of inverse. So let's do that. Shift sign. Oops. Shift sign. Oh my god. Shift sign. 2.88 and 25. That is giving me about 6.6 .6 sort of, you know, 6.62. Okay, so we got the answer then. Uh, then we go forward and it says the engine of the car produces an output power of this. Move the car, calculate the time taken. Okay. Now we should understand that what is the output really? So the output, of this should be of two things. First of all, it should be the gravitational potential energy gained. And what is the other thing it is doing? It is the, uh, the, the you know, the work that is, it is doing against the resistive force. Because it is not adding anything to um, the, velocity, so kinetic energy is not there. Now, gravitational potential energy was 4.8 times 10 raised to 4. And this was 1.1 times 10 raised to 4. So you add it together, 5.9 times 
highest standard so four joules is the output now power is working over time so power 1.7 times 10 raised to 4 and this is 5.9 times 10 raised to 4 divided by time so time is gonna be i just need to divide this value uh -huh. yes excuse me sir yes Sir, we uh, didn't work in the formula, why did we add this? Why did we add energy? Why did we add energy? Because... This is 3.5. Okay. Energy is added because there, there are two things happening. One, the car is going from this point to this point, right? So it is gaining gravitation potential energy. Also, it is doing some work against this. So, uh, so work done uh, of friction. In dono energies ko add karenge. So ye total output energy ke barabar. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So musse ye dhani puchse ke why am I adding gravitation potential energy and work together? Now, so you are easy as you should remember your three or five second order, right? Okay. Anyone else who has a question, please go ahead. Let me. Muneeb, how are you? Suman, late. Why? Alhamdulillah, sir. How are you? I'm good. Muneeb, have you done this paper? Do you know how, how to follow the timeline? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did it yesterday. Okay, good. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask, by the way, uh, question two is uh, out of our syllabus, right? Because you told us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Electric field okay. is gone. Field yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, uh, it says, charge sits on the ground next to remote control toy car. The car begins to move in a straight line directly away from the charge. The variation of time T and velocity of the car along with the system fine. The car horn continually. The moment I see the frequency, it means that it is a question about Doppler's effect. And Doppler's effect is frequency observed equals to frequency of to source time velocity, time velocity plus minus Vs. So we're going to see what is happening in this and then we're going to decide whether we want to use plus or not. Now, just to remind you, TK plus is used when moving away. And Minus is used when moving uh, towards an observer, right? So it will look forgot. Anyway, you shouldn't, but you, you know. Okay, now it says what is uh, the frequency of the charge that is emitted from the car from zero to two. Now, if you see the velocity is increasing, and we, we should remember that it, uh, we are following this formula, right? Because it is moving away, right? So if the velocity increases, which means the observed frequency is going to be smaller and smaller each time. Because the velocity is not constant, it keeps on increasing. And every time it increases, this will become even smaller, right? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that velocity or the frequency will be decreases. Uh, what frequencies sound heard? Call it a variation. Variation maybe won't try decreases, but decreasing. Now, at time 4.0 to time 6. Now, 4.0 is here, 6 is there. Now, you see the it is slowing down. And if something is slowing down, it means the velocity is going down, the frequency has to increase again. So, I'm going to say increasing. Okay, then it says determine the frequency, three significant figures of the sound heard by child that was emitted from the car horn at three, at this point. So you see that right now we, it is 12, I believe. And now we're going to use the formula. FS is 925, speed is 338. Okay, 925 times 338 divided by 338 plus 12 should give us the F naught. Okay. Sir, so, 
सर यस सर ए पार्ट टू में ये इंक्रीजिंग दोबारा बता देंगे कैसे है ठीक है वो मैंने ग्राफ नहीं देखा था ठीक है now it's in 890 hertz because uh, we got it, it is moving away and we have to use it, right now then it says determine uh, the time taken for the sound emitted at time 4 seconds to travel to the child so now we have 4 second speed is also 12 so i think it's pretty simple uh we don't have the total distance but we can find the distance by finding the area under the graph now pretty interesting question you know so this is 12 uh this is uh 4 this length is 4 and this is uh 2 so to find the distance uh, the area under the graph is going to be half times 12 so i'm applying the trapezium um uh, formula right and then you add uh, 2 plus 4 because these are the parallel sides and it is going to be i think 412 is 36 meters so this is the total distance and we have the speed as 338 so that's just uh, now you have because it is talking about sound so please do take the speed of sound don't take speed of the car it, it is you know is relevant So three three eight times okay equals to thirty six divided by two. So here we go. This is zero point one one. Okay, that would be the answer. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Right. Okay, and next. Okay, uh, initially submerged in water without even looking at it. I know this this question is from stationary waves. Now, sure. Uh, Go for a second. Okay. Okay, sure thing. All right. all right now going here so um it is speaker producing a frequency this positioned at open top end so this is open end and the tube is raised the water level of tube always levels uh with the water surface outside the tube the speed of sound is also given so this is a closed end and that's an open end right so first of all we remember this and then says describe a simple way that a student without requiring any additional equipment can detect when station wave is formed station wave is you know when it is formed the anti node will be right at the mouth so what are we going to say at anti node because it is the highest energy it is sound so i'm going to write uh, allowed a uh, loudest sound is heard so it means that at at the node has formed okay then it says determine the height of the top end of the tube above the water surface when a stationary wave is produced in a tube assuming that the anti node formed is uh, level with the top of the tube now there are two methods to do this one method that i suggest that you should always do and the other is a longer one if you want to 
so whenever uh, an closed end and an open end comes i have told you that its equation if you remember this that the frequency of that is equal to b times n over 4l this is the formula where n is the number of harmonics and in one end and uh, one open end closed and open the n is like multi i mean it's order of odd numbers now we are talking about the first produced wave right so which means n is going to be 1 the frequency was 530 uh the velocity was 340 n is 1 and we got to find l so it will just give you you know in a snap it's going to tell you with what is the answer so i believe we got to do 340 divided by 4 divided by 530 that is 0.16 all right now in case that you don't remember this formula and you like okay what do i do should i you know look here and there then you don't have to worry so there is another method what you do you use v equals to f lambda and find the lambda so the speed was uh, 340 frequency was 530 and then you do 340 divided by 530 that is 0. Six four meter is lambda. Now, if you know from you know if you have studied something, then you should know that the node is here and anti node is here, which means that this is equivalent to a quarter lambda because from node to an anti node is a quarter lambda. So I'm going to write a quarter lambda equals to the length right now and. Uh, A quarter of zero point six four will be equal to length. So what I'm going to do? Uh, quarter is zero point two five times zero point six four. So you will get exactly the same answer as zero point one six. So it's up to you what whatever you want to do. So like G, yes. So ye uh, one over four is a Beta anti node to node is one upon four lambda. That is the distance between them. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, determine the distance moved by the tube between the position at which the first and the second wave forms. Up, you guys need to understand something. The first forms when there is a you know an anti node forms here. the second would form if you move the tube upwards like this and it falls when you have like the second anti node forms this was anti node and then in the anti node right so how much distance you have to move to get the new wave is basically an anti node to anti node distance now if you remember anti node to anti node distance is equal to half lambda so it's asking about that distance how much length it moves right so we know that lambda is uh, 0.64 we found out so this should be exactly 0.32 that's why it's just one mark so what i'm saying is uh, remember this that between anti node to a node the distance is a quarter lambda between node to node or anti node to the next anti node the distance is half lambda if you do not remember this it is very alarming for me and now you have all the videos you can go watch the stationary wave one because this is very important now if you have any questions please let me know uh sir the sound that's heard in both the anti nodes will be the exactly the same right like one won't be louder than the other because it's the position of maximum displacement right exactly so there won't be any variation between them right no yes okay. that's why yes yes go on 
Yes, and uh, for the formula, we can just apply that, right? Instead of doing it the other way because the formula is quicker. So yeah. can we just apply the formula in every question? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I prefer this. I prefer this because sometimes it might tell you to find uh, the length between the third, you know, when the third wave forms. And for the third wave uh, form, you would be then making the wave and then counting how many nodes and then nodes of, uh, are there. So instead of that, you can just use, you know, five as your uh, n. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a lot quicker because I used to do it the other method before and I didn't know that there was a formula for it. That's why. Okay, so uh, you, you got to watch the video, okay? Yeah, I point. watched your video. That's how I yeah, found okay. out. Okay, that's good. Now, for all those who still don't remember, right? So I'm just telling you this. There are three systems right now. The systems are two closed ends. Two closed ends mean that there is a system where there is a string or a pipe, anything that has closed ends. So it would automatically say in the question. If that comes, the formula of frequency is V times N over 2L. And where N here is 1, 2, 3, 4, just whole numbers. Okay. Similarly, if we say uh, lambda, so lambda is uh, 2L over N, right? So you can actually use this. You can remember this if you like. It's up to you. The other thing is when it is like one end uh, closed and one open, what you do? One end open means that it is like this. There's one close, one end, just like we did it right now. So for frequency, it is V times N over 4L. For lambda, it is 4L upon N. But the only catch in this is that N here is the number of harmonic, is in odd numbers. It goes on like this. And then the third case is like two ends open. So that could also come like, it is like this, right? So if it's two end open, the frequency here is V times N over 2L and lambda is 2L upon N. And because this and this are similar, so it follows the same rules. So one, two, three, four, and so on, right? So if you remember then that's fine, right? So please do revise now. Then going to six, uh, in this question, well, I love these questions, but it's super easy if you practice them enough. Why? Because they have given you the current, I see. The length is given, the area is given, and the resistance is given. Fine. Now they say calculate the charge passing. Now charge is equal to I times T. The current is 0 0.80, and the time would be uh, 7.5 times 60. So you got it, okay? And uh, 0 0.80 times 7.5 times 60. So that's uh, 360 coulombs, that's all. Now, calculate the percentage efficiency with, the, with which the cell uh, supplies power to X. Okay, we got to find percentage efficiency, right? So first of all, we should understand that the voltage here, is the voltage of terminal, uh, sorry. Yeah, it is the voltage terminal or output. And here, whatever the voltage is, this is loss. So we want to find this and then divide it by the input voltage and then multiply by 100. So that's our basic rule. Now we got the current and uh, we got the resistance. So we're going to use V equals to IR. 0 0.80 resistance is, uh, 0 0.40. All right, let me try this. So this is 0 0.32 volts, and then efficiency is output over input times 100% because it is asking about percentage. Okay. So 0 0.32 is, and the EMF is the input, which is 0 0.48. I'm going to multiply. 
seems like a2 0 0.32 divided by 0 0.48. So this is about 66.7 uh, according to my calculation. So 66.7%, right. Now, uh, in the next one, it says there are 3.2 into 10 raised to 22 free conduction electrons in volume of wire. Okay, find the uh, density. Okay, now this N, this comes from this equation, I equals to N A B. This equation is also given in the data sheet if you don't know this, right? So N here basically is the number of electrons over per unit volume. So basically this is this is why it is called density, okay? Electron density. So we gotta find the volume of YX. So let's find the volume, but how? Okay, we have the length, we have the area. So the volume of X would be area times length. So area is 1.3 times 10 is to minus seven, multiplied by the length, which is this. Okay. Uh oh. All right, 1.3. So this is 3.9 times 10 raised to minus seven meters squared. So here we go. Okay, we might have to use it again. So we go down. Electrons are 3.2 uh, times 10 raised to 22 divided by, I forgot, 3.9 times 10 raised to minus seven. So what you do, what you do? 3.2 times 10 raised to power 22 divided by answer. So it is 8.2 times 10 raised to power 28. So that would be the answer. Now you have N and then it says find the drift velocity. So if you know that this formula gives you drift velocity. So I equals to N A B E. The I is 0 0.80, N we just found out. And area is uh, 1.3 times 10 is to minus seven. And velocity is what we need. And the elect charge on an electron or elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 is to minus 19. That is also given in the data sheet. Okay. So what you do? We got to divide so many things. Okay, so that needs to be a big equation. So let's do that. 0 0.8 on top divided by 8.2 times. Also be very careful, use this function. So you don't make mistake of any board mass thing. Okay. Oh my God. So because usually you end up losing marks for bad calculations. And that is happening because of this carelessness. So this is ninety. Okay, so um, well, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but this gives me four point seven times ten raised to minus four. Please do uh, when you're done. Please do check this answer, okay? So I'm not sure if I've basically done it correctly or not. Okay, then um, going to wire Y. It says wire Y has the same cross-sectional area and made of same metal. Now, now he's going towards R equals to rho L upon M. If the, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna highlight the things which are same. So it says K, same cross-sectional area, so both wires are the same A, and it says uh, same metal. Same metal means rho is same. So two things are same. You're not going to look at it then. It says wire Y is uh, longer than X. So it means that the length has increased, and with the length, the resistance is going to increase. Fine. 
So it says uh, wire wire is replaced. Uh, stay and explain the drift velocity, and it means we also need to uh, look at this. Fine. So first of all, if I were you, I would actually write that wire y has greater resistance, and that is purely because of its length, right? That we concluded from here. So that should be one mark. The second mark, if I were you, I would write. Hence, according to B equals to I R, uh, current decreases. That's my second part. And the third thing I would have written that if the current, which is directly proportional to drift velocity, if this decreases, then the velocity also decreases. Hence, according to I equals to NAVE, drift velocity B will be smaller. So I hope you guys understand this. So make your argument logical. It's very nice to write everything in points. Writing in points help you understand that I need to cover three marks. And uh, this is very important. So you, you're supposed to write three points, which makes logical you know, uh, sense to the exam as well for three marks. Now, Going to this question, a stationary nucleus P has a mass of this decreased by emitting alpha particle, fine. And it says that, whatever, okay. So use, uh, use the conservation, principle of conservation of momentum to explain why initial speed of Q and A must be in opposite direction, fine. Now, if you look at it, this is stationary, right? So in the momentum initially, or before the collision, let's write momentum before. This is just for your explanation. Don't write it like this. Momentum before is zero. So according to the law of conservation, we know that momentum after should also be zero. Now, now this is two more question, right? So how would I actually explain this? I would say, that number one, according to the principle, the momentum before is stationary. Oh, sorry, not stationary, my bad. According to the principle, the momentum before is zero. Hence, it must stay zero after interaction or collision, whatever you want. Okay. So this is this should give me one mark, right? Then I would say that since momentum is a vector quantity, why is it important? Because if something goes to the right, I take it as positive. If something goes to the left, I take it negative. So it, it means that the directions now matter. So I say, since momentum is a vector quantity, they have opposite directions to sum up as total total momentum to be zero. So you got to remember this. Right? So uh, that's fine. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. Now in the next part, it says determine the initial speed of V of nucleus Q, right? So for that, we need to have mass. This is 230, 243. 243 minus four would be 239U. So that is the mass, right? We don't know the velocity. So we're going to make the equation. So I'm going to write momentum 
before should be equal to momentum of by the way if you want to uh, revisit this and when we have done this so you have to go through the recordings of dynamics or momentum it's written and in that it is case three that i've discussed so you can actually view it okay. now uh initially the momentum is zero so i'm going to write zero afterwards uh if this is positive i've just taken it positive it depends whether you like right to be positive or left it's up to you just take whatever you like okay so for you times 1.6 times 10 raised to 7 plus 239 u and minus v why minus because it is going to the left i've taken it you can also switch the signs if you want to that's what i'm saying so you can take it there so it will be 239 u times v equals to 4u times 1.6 times 10 raised to 7 u and u cancels out so v will be equal to 4 times 1.6 times 10 raised to 7 divided by 239 so let's just do this now Okay, so this is two point seven, one two three four five, times ten raised to five meters per second. Ah, uh, so please do once to go through this to check your answer. Okay. So I hope uh, everything is clear. If you still have any questions, please let me know. Then it says calculate the initial kinetic energy, ah, uh, of alpha particle in MeV. Fine. Not bad. First of all, we're going to find kinetic energy. Half times the mass is four e cube, and the speed was one point six times ten raised to seven. That's what it is. So four is this, and u is the uniform atomic mass. So it is one point six six times ten raised to minus twenty seven. If you don't remember, it is also given in the data booklet at the. Uh, I mean data. Sheet in the stock, right? So now let's uh, do this. Zero point five times four times one point six six times one point six six times ten. Oopsie. Minus twenty seven. Oh, it it should be squared, no? Half mv squared. Okay, then. One point six times ten raised to power seven, and then you got to square this. So it is. Um, if the calculator hit this, eight point five, eight point five times ten raised to power minus thirteen joules. I guess that's correct. Eight point five times. Right, that's the next one. Okay. Okay. So then, um, one electron volt is given by one point six times ten raised to minus nineteen joules. You got to remember this. This is not given anywhere. Which means that one mega electron volt will be one point six times ten raised to minus thirteen joules. So just like that, right? Okay. So then. If one mega electron volt is this, then how many mega electron volts are going to be equal to eight point five times ten to minus thirteen? So to do that, you got to divide this. So minus thirteen to basically cut this. So one eight point five and divide by one point six. That would be five point three one. And e. Now, going to this part. This is a unusually long question. Now, uh, the graph shows a cross that represents p. 
nucleus r has the same nucleon number uh, and an isotope okay as a nucleon number of 242 and it is an isotope isotope means same proton number which is 95 so 242 minus 95 should be 147 so it should be right here same proton remember remember this because it is an isotope r decays by emitting beta minus particle to form a different nucleus s so s would be equal to r sorry no r decays to s plus a beta particle now r was 242 And ninety five, which means S is two four two, and ninety six. So you gotta, you know, just uh, add this line and this line separately. Okay. Then what you do? Uh, it says represent that. Okay, two four two. Uh, may say if I minus ninety six. So it's one four six. One four six and ninety six. So one four six and ninety six is here. So what? Yeah. So this should be uh, S. One four six. One four six and ninety six. Right. So it should be here. Then um, it says that. state the name of the other lepton uh, in addition to beta minus is emitted that has to be anti electron neutrino acha now remember this is just to you know revise few things just to tell you if a beta positive is released which is an uh, anti lepton right so with it a normal neutrino is released right so this is like lepton this is just electron neutrino if beta negative is released which is just a lepton then with it anti electron neutrino is released which is just uh, anti lepton so uh, that's why they, they release in pairs okay Just to tell you. All right. After that, uh, I think that's the end of it. Right. So, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead.